Uh, hello there and uh, welcome back to my new video. So in this video I'm going to introduce you with uh, live data. Uh, live data is a part of uh, Android architecture components like uh, view model for example. And uh, if you haven't watched my video about uh, view model I highly recommend you to do that before you continue because in this video we're going to use live data along with uh, view model. Uh, don't be scared if you haven't had any experience with uh, Android architecture components. Uh, they are pretty easy to learn. So uh, in this video you will see some practical examples of course but first we need to start with a theory so uh, what is uh, live data uh, live data is an observable data holder class unlike a regular observable uh, live data is uh, life cycle aware meaning uh, it respects the life cycle of uh, other app components such as activities fragments or services and uh, this awareness ensures uh, live data only updates uh, app component observers that are in active life cycle state Okay, so uh, let's stop for a moment to think about uh, this uh, definition. Uh, what does it mean observable data holder class? Well, that means uh, that live data can be observed by other components, for example like uh, UI controllers, which are essentially activities and fragments. And uh, live data is a life cycle aware component, uh, that means uh, that live data object will send updates to our observer, activity in this case, only if our activity is in active state. If our activity is paused or destroyed, a live data object will not send updates. Instead, it will just wait until our activity come back in active state and only then we are going to receive updates to our observer. And uh, that's the reason uh, it's called the live data. Data that is aware of the life cycle of its observer. Or activity in this case. Uh, generally, live data delivers uh, updates only when data changes and uh, only to active observers. An exception to this behavior is the observers uh, also receive an update when they change from inactive to active state. Uh, furthermore, if the observer changes from inactive to active a second time, it only receives an update if the value has changed since the last time it became active. Uh, okay, so now I'm going to show you some uh, practical examples with uh, live data. So here, inside our activity main layout, we have just a simple text view which represents a number. And uh, basically, we're going to create a simple example of a countdown timer. So before we start, uh, we need to add a dependency for a live cycle and a view model. Okay, so uh, you need to add the view model because we're going to use our live data along with the view model. So uh, next uh, we're going to create a new class. So uh, this class will be a view model for our main activity. So let's name this class uh, main activity view model. Okay, and our class will extend the view model. So again, if you haven't watched my video about uh, view model, I highly recommend you to do that before you continue. So here uh, we're going to create the one function start timer and we're going to create a countdown timer object above. And uh, inside our method uh, or function, we're going to initialize this countdown timer. So we need to pass two parameters. The first parameter is uh, the length of our uh, countdown timer, which is a 10 seconds. And the second parameter is a countdown interval, which is a one second. And we need to override the two methods, onFinish and onTick. So basically those two methods are self-explanatory. OnTick method will be called and triggered every second and on finished only when our countdown timer finishes. Okay, uh, so here uh, we're going to create uh, one uh, mutable live data object uh, named uh, seconds. And basically the difference between uh, mutable live data and the simple live data is that uh, data inside the mutable live data can be uh, assigned uh, multiple times. So uh, you will see later. And uh, here inside our onTick method uh, we're going to create one variable uh, which will basically convert uh, milliseconds into seconds. So here we're taking this parameter p0 and uh, dividing by 1000. Okay, and we're going to set the value of our mutable live data to this uh, new uh, variable which represents the seconds. Okay, so our mutable live data will be updated uh, every time uh, our onTick method uh, is called and that is uh, after uh, every second. And as you can see we are calling this uh, value method to set the value to our mutable live data object. And now we're going to call a start method to start our countdown timer. And just below that we're going to create another uh, function stop timer. And basically we want to cancel our timer with this uh, function, okay? So inside our main activity we want to uh, initialize our uh, view model, call a view model provider and pass uh, context, then use a get method and uh, pass uh, main activity view model class. So I just now noticed that uh, there is a typo inside our main uh, activity view model class, but uh, don't worry, it's not important. 
So as you can see inside our main activity we cannot access this uh, mutable live data object because it is a private. So we need to create a public uh, function for that and we will create uh, a live data this time and we will return this uh, mutable live data from above. Okay. So this uh, mutable live data should be only private to our view model. Okay. And for a public purposes we will create this uh, live data object and we are going to pass this uh, live data uh, function inside our main activity this time. So now pass this seconds and call the observe uh, method and you need to pass the owner and the second parameter is observer. So basically now from our main activity we are observing our uh, live data object and uh, when the data is changed we want to set the text to our text view. Okay so it's simple as that and basically uh, we are starting the timer before we uh, observe. So as you can see when we uh, run our application because uh, all our code in is inside our own create method the timer will uh, start immediately and as you can see everything works fine so uh, we're going to improve this uh, example uh, furthermore and uh, basically we are accessing a live data, a public live data function instead of uh, uh, private uh, mutable live data. So next uh, we want to create uh, one more uh, mutable live data object and this time it will be a type of a boolean. And inside on finish method we want to set the value of this uh, uh, boolean mutable live data to true. So basically when our countdown timer is finished we want to set our finished uh, uh, mutable live data to true. And we want to observe this uh, live data object from our main activity as well. So if our finished uh, is true, then we want to display a simple toast message saying uh, finished. So now let's run our application again to see how will that works. And uh, as you can see our uh, countdown timer is uh, working perfectly fine. And when this uh, reaches a zero we're going to see a simple toast message. Okay and there you go. So that's uh, working perfectly fine. So basically from our main activity we are observing those uh, uh, mutable live data objects and uh, everything works fine. So uh, we're going to improve this uh, example furthermore. Uh, okay so inside our activity main layout I want to add uh, one edit text and uh, two buttons. So I'm going to speed up this uh, video just a little bit. And one button will be uh, for start and the second one for stop. Okay. So let's uh, connect those constraints and uh, let me just change a few attributes here inside. So uh, let's set the ID for this edit text to number input, uh, the hint to milliseconds, uh, start button should be named start, okay, and the stop button uh, should uh, say stop, okay, and that's it. So now inside our main activity I want to add an onclick listener for our start and stop button, okay. So here inside our start button onclick listener I'm going to cut and paste this uh, start timer uh, function. So basically we are going to start this uh, start timer uh, function from our start button on click listener. And for our stop button we're going to reference this uh, stop timer function and we're going to stop our timer. So here inside our start button uh, on click listener we want to say if our number input text is uh, empty or if uh, number input uh, text length is uh, less than 4 then we're going to display toast message saying uh, invalid number. And uh, in else block we want to start our timer. And uh, inside our main activity view model I want to create a new mutable live data object named uh, timer value and I'm going to set the value of this uh, mutable live data from our main activity. So let me uh, just copy this name and paste here inside uh, our countdown timer. Okay so instead of uh, hard coding the value of the first parameter I'm going to pass the value of this uh, new uh, mutable live data object. And here from our main activity I'm going to set the value of this timer value to our uh, number input. So basically we want to get the text from our number input and we want to set the value of our uh, timer value. Okay. So now uh, let's me, let me just check this. So we have just one error. Okay so I forgot to say equals instead of a colon. Okay and everything works fine now. Okay let's run our application to check it out. Okay so here uh, when I click start as you can see we can see this toast message saying invalid number and when I type a number uh, less than uh, four uh, numbers it will say uh, invalid number as well. So only if I type uh, 1000 which has a size of four numbers then it will work. So now let me just type uh, 5000 milliseconds and, and as you can see it works perfectly fine. So let me just type here for example 10 seconds click start and when we press stop as you can see the timer will stop. So now everything works fine. Uh, our live data objects are working perfectly fine with our uh, view model. 
So next, what we can improve uh, in this application, we can also say, uh, so here inside our uh, stop button on click listener, we can just set uh, the text to our text view uh, to zero when we press stop. And now let's check it out again. So let's type, for example, 10 seconds, click start. And when we press stop, as you can see, the timer stops and uh, it resets. And uh, there it is. So everything works perfectly fine. And you saw how we can use a live data object to communicate between uh, activity and uh, view model. Everything works fine. We can uh, we can observe our live data objects uh, through our main activity and uh, everything works fine. Okay, so uh, let's conclude this video by listing some uh, advantages of using uh, live data. So first, uh, live data ensures that uh, your uh, UI matches your data state. So live data follows the observer pattern. Uh, live data notifies observer objects uh, when the live cycle state changes. And instead of updating the UI every time the application data changes, uh, your observer can update the UI every time there is a change. Uh, next, uh, with uh, live data there is no memory leaks. So uh, live data objects will clean up after themselves uh, when their associated lifecycle is destroyed. Uh, next, uh, no crashes due to uh, stopped activities and uh, if the observer's lifecycle is inactive, such as uh, in the case of paused or destroyed activity, then it doesn't receive any live data updates. Uh, no more manual uh, lifecycle handling, uh, UI components just observe uh, relevant data and don't stop or resume observation. Uh, live data automatically manages uh, all of this uh, since uh, it's aware of the relevant live cycle status changes while observing. Uh, live data is uh, always up to date. If a live cycle becomes inactive, it receives the latest data upon becoming active again. For example, uh, an activity that was in the background receives the latest data right after it uh, returns to the foreground. And uh, proper configuration changes. If uh, an activity or fragment is uh, recreated uh, due to a configuration change, like a device rotation, it immediately receives the latest uh, available data. Okay, so uh, that will be all for this video. Uh, thank you for watching. Please like this video if you find it helpful, of course. And uh, see you in the next one.